strictly forbidden. Oi, if any of you blokes finds a deranged rant box set, I want it back. That is personal property. Oi, if you do happen to find Duran Duran in the theater, please drop it at me tech box at the end of the show. Uh, enjoy the performance. presentation of The Murder at Hammersham Manor. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Chris. <laughs> and I'd like to personally welcome to you what will be my directorial debut, as well as my first production as head of the Drama Society. Uh, first off, I would like to apologize uh, for the little box office ticket mix-up we had. But I'm sure the 212 of you that this might have affected will enjoy our little murder mystery as much as you would have enjoyed Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are particularly excited about bringing you this play this evening uh, for many reasons. But for one, this is the first time in the society's history we've been able to find a play that matched the number of available society members perfectly. And, oh, now, it's, it's no secret that our lack of available actors has in the past sometimes uh, hampered our previous productions. As in last year's Chekhov play, Two Sisters, uh, <laughs> our Christmas presentation of The Lion and the Wardrobe, <laughs> and of course, last summer's musical, <laughs> uh, anyway, we, we, of course, this is the first time we've been able to stage a show on this scale, and we are thrilled. It is no secret that we have in the past had to contend with rather small budgets, as was evident in our recent presentation of the Roald Dahl classic, James and the Peach. Uh, unfortunately, during the run of that show, the only peach we had went bad. And we uh, had to put on a rather hastily devised alternative entitled James. <laughs> Where's your peach? <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, without further ado, uh, on to the main event, which I am confident will be our best show ever. So now, if you would, please join me and put your hands together, but not yet, not yet. Wait for it. <laughs> well, uh, Susan H.K. Bridewell's classic Who Done It, The Murder at Havisham Manor. Yes, now. <laughs> Charlie, if you want to come out, we'll come in. 
Damn it, he's locked the door. Give me those keys, Perkins. Here they are, sir. Thank you, Perkins. Now let's get this door open. We're coming in, Charlie. We're coming in. I hope so. I'll check his pulse. Last question. <laughs> Last, I should have known something was wrong. It's someone like Charlie to disappear like this. Sir, he's dead. <laughs> Damn it, Perkins, he can't be. He's my oldest friend. He's not breathing, sir, and there's no hint of a heartbeat. Well, I'm dumb. He was right as rain just an hour ago. I, I don't understand. He can't be dead. He was as fit as a fiddle. It doesn't make sense. Of course it makes sense. He's been murdered. <laughs> Good God, where's Florence? She's in the dining room, sir. Shall I fetch her? At once, Perkins, and quickly. But. She's bound to have one of her hysterical episodes. Damn it, gather everyone in here. Good God, Charlie, dead. What a horror. Lounge to dining room. Cecil, Miss Collymore, come to Charles's private rooms at once. Charles Havisham has been murdered. <laughs> Do you think it was murder, Perkins, or perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it was suicide? Suicide? Mr. Havisham? Not possible. Never was there a man with more zest for life than Charles Havisham. He was young, rich, and soon to be married. Why on earth would he commit suicide? But why on earth would anyone want to murder him? Charlie was such a gentle fellow. Generous, kind, a true... <coughs> philanthropist. <laughs> He never had an enemy in his life. Until today, it seems. Shall I phone the police, sir? The police? They wouldn't make it out here for days in this snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Though I'll telephone Inspector Parker. He lives just the other side of the village. He'll be here in next to no time. Hand me that phone, Perkins. <laughs> Thank you, Perkins. <laughs> Good evening. Give me Inspector Carr. I know it's late. Damn it, I don't care about the weather. There's been a murder. Somebody's murdered Charles Havisham. That's right. Oh, that's right. Sound of the air on Q4. Thank you. He's on his way. Inspector Carter. They say he's the best damn inspector in the district. He'll crack this case and quick. Very good, sir. What shall I do? Lock every door, man. Not a soul gets out of Hannesham Manor until the... <laughs> until the killer is found. At once, sir. And assemble everyone in here. Right away, sir. God, Charles Havisham murdered his own engagement. <laughs> Good God, Charles Havisham murdered at his own engagement party. What a grim, grim night. Florence! <laughs>
My brother, dead. It can't be. Calm yourself, Cecil. Call this man a stiff drink, Perkins. Right away, sir. Charles always kept his scotch upstairs in the study. Did you know that my brother has the funnest selection of scotch in the entire county? Don't you think I know that, Cecil? He was my best friend. Well, he was my brother, Thomas. Hegator, Charlie dead. Oh, my fiance dead. I can't bear it. You ought to leave my sight this evening, Florence. <laughs> oh, my God. He's drunk the whole bottle, sir. There's not a drop left. Hey, hey Tool, there's another bottle in the cabinet. Yep, yes, sir. Of course, you're right, this one's full. This is horrifying. I mean, who on earth would have a motivation to murder Charles Adams? I can't imagine. Oh, it is madness. My brother was a good man. Who on earth would want to kill him? I'm in shock, Thomas. As am I, Cecil. As am I. This is... This is all the fog my nose can take. I simply can't stand it. Thomas, I think I'm becoming hysterical. No, no, Florence. No, not in one of, the, one of your episodes here. Take one of your films. It's simply unbearable. I too feel as though I could pass out. Perkins, pour him a stiff drink. Try to wait, sir. Thank you, Perkins. There, there, Florence. Well done. Deep breaths. This is terrible. Just a week after our engagement. Well, here's to a good brother. <laughs> Tonight, the night of our engagement party, my soul is engulfed with deep sorrow. But I love Charles with all of my heart. 
Why? As I said, driven mad with paranoia and jealousy. <laughs> oh no! The Inspector! Thank heavens, he's here. What a terrible snowstorm. <laughs> I am Inspector Carter. Take my case. Yes, Inspector. This must be Charles Havisham. I'm terribly sorry. This must have all given you a damn shock. It did. We're all still reeling. Mm, naturally. <laughs> Tell me. Are any of you the deceased immediate family? Well, I'm Cecil Havisham. I'm his brother. I'm Florence Collymore. I'm his fiance. Tonight was our engagement party. Well, I uh, take it we are all assembled here then? <laughs> yes, the only other member of staff is Arthur the gardener. And I saw him and Winston leaving for the weekend hours ago. Winston? His guard dog. Oh, very well. Uh, have you poured everyone a good stiff drink? Ah, of course, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's to a man that we all loved, to Charles. Charles! Charles. <laughs> Delicious! <laughs> Excellent! Lovely! That's a damn fine bottle, Germans. What's the vintage? <coughs> Flammable and corrosive, sir! <laughs> Begin my inquiries, the sooner we can get to the bottom of this ghastly business. So, uh, you there, take the body upstairs to the study where I can examine it. Yes, Inspector. I'll lend you a hand, Perkins. And uh, when you're done, lock all the doors and then prepare this room. I shall conduct my inquiries here afterwards. Inspector. Do you have any idea of the cause of death, Inspector? Uh, it could be a number of things strangulation, suffocation. Poison, perhaps. I would not like to say it until I'd had a chance to examine the body fully. Poison, Inspector? Surely not. Try not to think about it, Miss Collymore. As soon as I have finished, uh... <laughs> as soon as I have finished up the... <laughs> as soon... <laughs> as soon as I have, uh... <laughs> Down there, gentlemen. It's 
such a tragedy for a man to die just three months before he has to be married. I can't stand it. Just look at him. <laughs> Lying there. This is most... <laughs> Morris. Morose indeed. <laughs> Cecil, you must tread carefully. It would be easy for the two of us to become implicated in Charles's death. If they find out about us, we'll be suspects. Oh, so what? So we were having... <laughs> so we were having an affair. It doesn't mean we killed the man. Well, of course not, but that's what the inspector will think. We'll just have to carry on as if... We'll have to carry on as if, as if everything is as it was, except now you won't have to marry my beastly brother. And soon we can finally be together and not keep secrets. Oh, yes, my love. But first, now that Charlie's officially out of the way, I must ask you a question. It's so strange to think of Charles being dead. He was such an influence on all our lives. It's almost as though he's still alive in the room with us now. <laughs> His stillness unnerves me. Yes, well, seeing a cadaver for the first time can be quite the very <laughs> uh. Uh. Yes, well, uh... Uh, check his pockets, Thomas. Yes, Inspector. <laughs> A letter! <laughs> now I need you to uh, pull yourselves together and help me dust the body for fingerprints. Yes, Inspector. What? What was that? Inspector? I could swear I just saw him breathing. Breathing, sir? Oh, no! <laughs> Nonsense, Collymore. This man is dead. Oh. Oh, Florence. Will you do the honor of becoming my wife? Will you marry me? No, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Havisham. 
Miss Collymore. I've come to collect the keys to lock us all inside. Oh, thank you, Perkins. <laughs> I shall lock the doors at once. You don't think Perkins suspects us, do you? Oh, that old fool? Of course not. Oh, enough words. Take me. I forgot the inspector's notebook. What in God's name? I was about to faint. Cecil caught me. I haven't time for this. Now that I have... Now that I have the inspector's notebook, I'll be on my way. Damn these blasted interruptions. Oh, kiss me, Cecil. I can't wait a second longer. <laughs> Don't worry, Florence. You 
kept you all waiting, but I've finished examining the body upstairs, and now I might have... <laughs> Now, my interviews can begin. But excuse me, I uh, wish to, uh... <laughs> Perkins, bring in Charles' personal effects. Where shall I place them, sir? On the mantelpiece. <laughs> case I was working on. I see. How long have you worked at Harrison now? Eighty years. <laughs> eighty years? Eight, eight years. Eight, 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 years. Eight, eight, eight years. And has your time here been a happy one? My time with Mr. Havisham has been nothing but a joy. I feel that since I've come here, I've been seen not only as a butler, but also as a friend and a confidant. Now, if you need me, I'll be in my quarters. Exits. <laughs> Exits! Thank you, Perkins. And if you would be so kind as to show uh, Florence uh, Collymore in on your way out. No need, I'm already here. Don't ask too much of me, Inspector. I feel fragile as glass. <laughs> ah, come on, at last. You found me a pencil? <laughs> yes, Inspector. <laughs> and my notebook. <laughs> well, I knew I left him somewhere. <laughs> 
Um, I, I wish to speak with your sister alone, please. Very well. I shall be in the library, Florence. But Dennis! <laughs> Don't fret, Miss Cullen. All my questions will be brief and to the point, and then you can get some rest. First off, how old are you? Twenty-one. I'll make a note of it. <laughs> and when were you engaged to be married? In the new year. And how long have you known your fiancé? For only seven months, but my brother has known him since school. He introduced us at a local gala, and it was love at first sight. I knew from the very first moment I saw him that he was the man that I wished to marry. I've run out of paper. <laughs> when you lost someone, there's no such thing as rushing, Inspector. Have you ever thought you were rushing into this marriage? Why wouldn't I love him? <laughs> Did you love him then? How could anyone have benefited? Can you think of anyone who would have benefited from this murder? Cecil? Not even Cecil? I wasn't having an affair! Don't raise your voice to me, Inspector! You were having an affair! Don't tell me to calm down! Calm down, Miss Cullimore! <laughs> but where did you find it? In a letter in your hand, writing addressed to Cecil, declaring your love for him and saying that the thought of marrying Charles repulsed you. Oh, Charles read it now. But where did you find it? I found it in his pocket! Charles read it? Then it was suicide. Perhaps. Or maybe murder. Conceived by yourself and Cecil so that you could run off together. You diabolical beast! How can you? I won't stand for this, Inspector! Accuse me again and you'll be sorry! What's all this shouting? <laughs> I was uh, questioning Miss Collymore, nothing more. Oh, well, what's wrong, Florence? Oh! <laughs> Calm down! <laughs> Stop shouting! <laughs> She's having one of her episodes. <laughs> Snap out of it! You're hysterical! <laughs> Florence! Where are you going? <laughs> Come back here this instant! <laughs> She's run off. <laughs> I'll fetch her back. You stay here, Cecil. I dare say the inspector will have some questions for you. You were Charles's brother, after all. Oh, well, I, I, I do apologize about Florence, Inspector. She's, uh, obviously shaken. <laughs> as, as we all are, it has been a long night, and it's getting late. Yes, indeed, it's already almost 11 o'clock. <laughs> so do you have questions for me, Inspector? Yes, yes, similar to those I asked Miss Collymore. Uh, you and your brother. Did you get along? Oh, it was, it was up and down. And uh, ever since father died, there was a much more strain in our relationship. And well, it's no secret that father loved Charlie more than myself. Mm. That's your father's portrait above the fireplace, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> was the spitting image of Charles, was it not? Oh yeah, ever since he was quite young. And you were the junior by four years. Oh, almost four, and didn't I know it? Growing up with Charles, well, all he did was embarrass and patronize me. Because Charlie always did best. And father? Well, father always took his side. And on the off chance that he did his age, well, I was the man was simply unbearable. Yeah, he sounds like oh, the ideal brother.
tonight for you to appear as your brother. Oh, we may have had an up and down, but deep down we can't run it off. And yet you're having an affair with his fiance. And what makes you say that? The letter I found in Charles's pocket. Oh, you know about the letter? Yes, indeed. As it seems, so did Charles. that Florence and I had an affair, but it proved nothing. We had nothing to do with Charlie's murder, but Thomas Collymore does. Oh, Inspector! He is a dangerously unhinged man with a devil of a temper, and Florence was his sister. So if I said it once, then I shall say it again when he saw them together at tonight's engagement party. He just couldn't the fuck did anyone marry his sister, let alone his old high school chum? So when he saw them together, he simply snapped, slashed, killed Charles. It was an act of passion and nothing more. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. You have been most helpful. Well, anything I can do to aid in your investigation? Send in Thomas Collymore. I wish to question him next. Oh, naturally. Blast it all, Charles. Who could have killed you? Seems like everyone in this damned house seems guilty. Oh, that's queer. Something underneath the cushion. A ledger. A ledger. on stage. <laughs> this is not a game show. <laughs> it's not like one with Kelly. I can see you do. <laughs> you, you are a horrible audience. <laughs> Except you, Bobby. You're fine. I work with her. I have to deal with her in the morning. <laughs> but the rest of you are horrible. I mean, I know we should also a little more respect for what we're trying to do up here. But what do you expect for 40 quid? <laughs> I mean, do you know how much it would cost for you to have, have, have dinner at a show in London or New York? Well, I don't either. But I'm sure it's very ex Oh, look. <laughs> a ledger. A, a ledger. <laughs> that I, am, uh, I need to examine upstairs in the study. I, I will return to question Thomas presently. Oh, do take your time, Inspector. Indeed. Have you been able to locate your sister Florence? She ran out into the grounds. <laughs>
did you feel about Charlie and Florence's engagement? Oh, I was <laughs> over I was overjoyed, of course. Oh. I loved Florence and I loved Charles. I couldn't approve more than that. Oh, come off it, Collie Moore. We all know that you were always possessive and jealous when it came to your sister. Oh! <laughs> What of them? Discrepancies? What are you talking about, man? Gone! Gone where? Nine thousand pounds missing? Good God! Perkins, get in here! Sir? <laughs> Bring me my bank book, Perkins. Your bank book, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Your pen, sir. Disgrace. Who am I speaking with? I shall write that name down. What is it? Your name. For your superiors. Mr. Fitzroy, okay. Mr. <clears throat> Fitzroy. I'll have you know, Fitzroy, this telephone call has placed me in a very uncomfortable position. <laughs> now look here, I didn't authorize these transactions. You find out who did it, you call me back. Good God! <laughs> well, what was that? 9,000 pounds stolen from oh. my private savings. Oh, good God! Oh. Well, Mr. Collymore, I, I must admit that I have a confession to make. Hmm? Your sister Florence and I, we were having an affair. What? <laughs> Time has come. 
come for you to answer to me for your indiscretions. Draw your sword. I'm God. Huh? Nice try. You're no match for my skill. You know, sometimes I forget that you're Charles's brother. You're so pathetic. Oh, I'm still too quick for you, Collie Hall. situation such as this. Years of experience. <laughs> Naturally. Now, the, uh, the important thing now is for us all to remain calm and not let anyone out of our sight. Um, where is Florence coming off? She's on her way. Get in here, Florence. <laughs> <laughs> Save me, brother. 
I said, let anyone hurt a hair on your head. I'm panicking. <laughs> I cannot believe Kiesel would do Cecil. so. Cecil! Cecil is doing this. Try to relax, Miss Collymore. I shall faint. You shan't faint. <laughs> What a devil of a situation this is! That's so fast and... those keys. We must lock him out. <laughs> Here they are, sir. We must lock him out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Here they are, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We must lock him out before he can burst in on us. Inspector, I cannot help it. 
Tussle. The gardener left at six. The only other member of the staff is Perkins. Oh, good God, I needed that. Oh, yeah, you know heck? Access to the Enjoyed our break. I have been informed that we'll be able to resume our production momentarily, I assure you. And I must say, I'm rather pleased to see how many of you did return for the second act. <laughs> Especially this table here. I'm so sorry about everything. Really, really, if we, we're all out of desserts, but if we had any more, I would give them to you for half price. <laughs> yes, all, all out. All out. So sorry. Anyway, yes. Oh, but oh, this is this, this is not this conversation thing. <laughs> At the end of the show, if we get there, 
Uh, <laughs> then, we, then we can talk. But uh, until then, no, it's me, I talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> I do the talking, you do the laughing and applauding. Very nice. Very nice. But anyway, and we will be starting, we will be starting again soon. Yes, and it's certainly not the worst first act the Colony Drama Society has seen by any means, what? <laughs> I'm sure some of you were here for the, the play we had not too long ago that due to an unfortunate casting error, uh, we put on Snow White and the rather seven tall broad gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's going quite badly to be honest. <laughs> but before we begin, I mean, yeah, really... we still can't find the dog and, and she's still unconscious. Shut up! <laughs> Thank you very much. Before we begin, uh, one word of health and safety administration. For any of you who ate any of the salted nuts that were available in the lobby during intermission, please seek medical help immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and now, the concluding act of the murder at Havisham Manor. <laughs> It's one of us. <gasps> this is a disaster. And it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> murders in one evening at Harrison Manor. What a grisly night. Frightful, brother. Frightful. And look, Mr. Collymore, the snowstorm outside is building. Yes, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not careful, we'll all be snowed into this slaughterhouse. We must discover the guilty man. Indeed. The gunshots came from the library. I will investigate that room. The rest of you remain here. This whole business is a disgrace. <laughs> now, let us remind ourselves of what we know. We know that Charles Havisham was found murdered here in his own private rooms on the night of his engagement party. We know that his fiancée was involved in an affair with his younger brother. How could my sister behave in such a way? Not now, Thomas. We know that he too was murdered on the same eve. Cold. <laughs> the only thing we don't know is who the murderer is. Oh, the tension in this house is. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, no. The tension in this house is. Oh, the tension in this house is. <laughs> Florence, how do you feel now? Oh, uh, I'm good. <laughs> That's dreadful. <laughs> oh, yes, dreadful. I want to die. <laughs> That's the spirit? <laughs> well, now, Miss Collymore, I must ask you an important question. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when the murder occurred? 
on the floor with a mustache. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So was I. Uh, oh, kiss me a thousand times. I'm yours. <laughs> Of course, Florence, that's what brothers are for. <laughs> this is a disaster, and already it's midnight. Cecil Harrison and clove blood tonight, and you know that was not the plan. Who the devil could that be? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> Good day, Miss Collymore. We must hide you out of harm's way. Charles had a secret passage built behind this bookcase. Stand back! I'll open it. <laughs> What's 
Step inside, Miss Cullymore! <laughs> Confront Parker 
things and uh, let him know that uh, we know what he's done. Yeah. Uh, to the elevator, Colleen. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. We'll have to take the stairs. After you. Thank <laughs> you. 
time, yes. <laughs> Another transaction traced. A one-way ticket to don't know I have no idea. Hello. Are you there, Fitzroy? <laughs> Hello? Oh, there you are, Fitzroy. <laughs> you have taken 9,000 pounds of my money. You have caused me more pain than you could possibly imagine. I shall hang up this phone immediately. <laughs> Mr. Collingwell, you look like you could use a scotch. No! <laughs> no more scotch, thank you, Perkins. A ghastly evening. I must examine my bank records again, if you'll excuse me. You'll excuse me. <laughs> if you'll excuse me. But Inspector, there's something about the handkerchief you've not detected. What is that, Perkins? It bears the quality initial FC. Lawrence Collymore is the murderer, Inspector. Me, the murderer? How can you? You are the murderer, of Miss Collymore. It's clear for a soul to see. You were engaged to be married to Charles, a man who in your own letters would have been you to spies. And on top of that, you were having an affair with his brother. It seems perfectly plausible that, that you conspired together in order that you could run off after his death. <laughs> Whose idea was this? <laughs> if you'll excuse me! once more. Yes, Inspector. Mother, you stay here and make sure Florence Collymore does not leave this room. Arthur, you have known me years. Surely you believe I would never 
do something like this. On the contrary, Miss Collymore, it is I who have found you to be the guilty party. Oh, Arthur, how, how can you? Please, you must protect me from these fiends. Hey. I'd do anything to win your trust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Collymore, doing what you always do, <laughs> using your power of persuasion over men. I have seen the way that you look at me from across the grounds. Even now, the way you're looking at me. <laughs> Even now, the way you're looking at me. <laughs> Even now, the way you're looking at me, I know how you feel. Oh, but Miss Cully, well, come on, I'm just a simple gardener. And you have said before how... Down the 
Miss Callimon. <laughs> now, where is this medication? <laughs> Charlie could, and that's why you killed him! Get up! 
I know your secret, Inspector. What will you do? Kill me too? I will, confound it! <gasps> what a devil of a situation this is! Not so fast, Inspector! <laughs> Quickly, quickly, 
Charlie! Look, Finn Spetty! Finn and Spetty! Back to my plate, Charlie! Put your Thank you, Perkins. Now fetch my reading glasses from the library. As you wish, sir! Well, I will spend the rest of your life in jail. I will strike you down, Charlie! Oh, it's no use. There's no way out. I 
I forged your name on all the accounts. I'm going to flee with the money as soon as I've framed someone here for the murder. But I not counted on your accountant catching on to the discrepancy so soon or calling you this quickly. You rogue. I trusted you, Carter. You made a mistake there, and it could be your last. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Bang! Oh! Destruction shall prevail. Betrayed by my brother. <laughs>